have your Bible, and just as we bring our meeting to a close tonight, we're turning to Luke's Gospel, Luke's Gospel chapter 5, just for two verses, Luke's Gospel chapter 5, we've been thinking about this passage of the Word of God just this afternoon, we can't get away from it, and we feel it's for the meeting tonight, Luke's Gospel chapter 5, and if you cast your eye down to verse 12, Luke's Gospel, chapter 5 and verse 12. And it came to pass when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy who, seeing Jesus, fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. I want to close this meeting tonight by talking to you for a moment or two about this man. We don't know his age. We don't know his name. We don't know if he was married. We don't know his occupation. But the Holy Spirit has described him as a certain man. Maybe there's such a man like that in this meeting tonight, or maybe it's a certain lady, and God wants to speak to your heart. Almost every time that we preach the gospel, we always emphasize that God is interested in the individual. Every time that you read through the New Testament, you'll discover that the Lord Jesus, while he was in the midst of the crowd, he always seemed to get alone with individuals. And in this very meeting tonight, God wants to speak to individuals. That's why whenever we get saved, we get saved one at a time. You can't get saved because your parents have got saved for you. You're not saved because someone else can get born again for you. You get saved the moment whenever you come personally to the Lord Jesus Christ. This man that I want to talk to you tonight, it says there was a certain man that was full of, of leprosy. I want you very briefly to see the problem that this man had. There's times and time again in the Bible where God paints a picture of sin. Sometimes he describes it as being blind. The devil has blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine into your darkened heart. And if you're in this meeting tonight and you're not saved, and you say, maybe after gospel messages and after gospel meetings, well, I don't really see my need to be saved. I don't really see the seriousness of my sin. And I don't really see the need of having the Lord Jesus as my own and personal Savior. The reason why you don't see it is because you're blinded by the God of this world. Somebody said before that described the gospel to someone that's not saved and the Spirit of God is not dealing with is like, describing a sunset to a blind man. You can't see it. But then the Lord Jesus also describes sin like being lame. My dear men and women, this evening, sin cripples. Sin cripples us in our soul. There's things that you and I can't do as sinners whenever you and I get saved and born again that you can do. And then in this passage of the Word of God, sin is described like leprosy. I don't know if you've ever seen a leper before. But leprosy is a disease that's degenerate. It always gets worse and worse and worse. Whenever leprosy first came in the shores of Britain many, many years ago, it appeared on the skin as a small, pale dot. And whenever men and women saw it, they envied it. They thought it was something of beauty. They craved to have it. My dear men and women, it was only maybe months, weeks, days, years later that that little small dot that looked so small, so beautiful to the eye, began to destroy the body. That's exactly what sin does. Sin starts small. Sin looks so attractive at the beginning. The Bible says that the pleasures of sin are but for a season. And we're not here to deny that there's no pleasure in sin because there is pleasure in it. But the Bible says the pleasure of sin is but for a season. I want you to see this man. I want you to see him maybe in his home. Maybe he was with his wife. Maybe he was with his children. 
Maybe he was at work and he discovered wherever it was in his body, maybe his arm, maybe in his hand, maybe on his leg, he discovered this small white dot, insignificant. And maybe there were thoughts went through his mind. He maybe said to himself, well, I think, I think that's leprosy. I think that's a very, very serious problem that I have. I don't think that man for a moment would have went home and tried to cover it up. I don't think for a moment that man would try to forget about it or even to ignore it or even to deny it. I'm sure that man that day, wherever he was, went to a physician of some sort to discover what the problem was. My dear men and women, tonight you could be in this very meeting and you know all about sin and you know how small it has begun, you know how big it has become, you know the power of it, you know the seriousness of it, and yet you tonight could be covering your sin. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. You could cover it with the, sin, the, with the robes of religion. You could try to be good. You could try to learn the Bible. You could be baptized and confirmed. You could even come to this meeting tonight thinking that you're winning merit with God. But you cannot cover sin. The Bible says that all have sinned. Paul said that the scripture has concluded that all are under sin. Contamination. We've all known about COVID-19, washing our hands and all the rest of it. But the Bible says, though you take uh, soap, you shall never wash away your sin. My dear friends, tonight you can't cover your sin. You can't wash it away with detergent. Sin contaminates. This man got leprosy from someone else. You know, dear men and women, you got your sin from your parents. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all of sin. The psalmist David, he could say those words, that I was born in sin, and shaped in iniquity. You're not going to not get into heaven because you're not good enough. The reason why you'll not get into heaven is because you haven't had your sins washed away. Sin contaminates. But not only does sin contaminate, sin controls controls it has a has a power that's why paul in romans chapter 7 he said the things that i didn't want to do i always ended up doing them the things that i always tried to stay away from there was a power just like georgina tonight she knew that drink was wrong but there was a power there was a draw my dear friends, tonight you could be in this meeting and look cleaner than a hound's tooth. You could have the newest dress, the newest suit, but deep down in your soul tonight, if you're not saved, you're not only contaminated by sin, but you're controlled by sin, domineered by the devil. That's why tonight the alcoholic can't break the addiction. That's why the gambler can't break the addiction. That's why a man or woman, whether they're hooked in pornography or in the occult, they can't break the addiction because there's a power uh, higher than themselves. There's a controlling power. But sin not only con contaminates and sin not only controls, sin condemns, condemns us. You and I were born into this world with a conscience. You remember the first time that you stole you remember the first time that you lied. You remember the first time you men that are in pornography. You remember the first time that you clicked onto that website. It annoyed you. you. You got vexed in your soul. It troubled you. Your conscience pricked you. But the longer you do it, the more you obey the lusts of the flesh. There's a seared conscience. And the things that used to trouble you then maybe don't trouble you tonight. My dear men and women, turn to the Lord Jesus Christ because he and he alone is the great deliverer from sin. No matter who you are, no matter how low you've sank, no matter how far you've gone, praise God from sinking sand, he is able to lift at this very moment. That's the sort of savior I'm giving to you tonight. One that's able to deliver from the power of the enemy. But there's not only the control of sin and the contamination of sin, and there's not only the condemnation of sin. I'm glad to tell you tonight that there's a message in the gospel, the good news of the gospel, that there's cleansing from all sin. Hallelujah. That he's able to wash away your guilt. He's able to wash away the stains. There is a fountain filled with blood 
drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. Would you love to have all your stains removed tonight? Would you love to have the account of your sins settled with God? Would you love to leave this meeting with a conscience pure and clean? That, that void, that separation between you and God at this moment because of your sin can be bridged and bridged alone in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. This man made a discovery. He knew that there was something wrong. My dear friends, today we live in a day of discovery. 1700s the discovered electric. It was in 1928 whenever Fleming discovered penicillin. Christopher Columbus in the 1400s discovered America whenever he stepped off his little boat and he seen Newfoundland for the first time. Great discoveries, great discoveries by men and women down through the centuries of time. The greatest discovery that you could make in this meeting tonight that you're a sinner by nature, a sinner by practice, and if you don't get your sins sorted tonight, you will die and go to a lost eternity. But you need to discover also that there was a man that died for you on the cross of Calvary, bearing shame and scoffing rude. In your place condemned, he stood. Here was a man that made a discovery. I don't think he covered it. I don't think he ignored it. I think he faced it. I wonder, have you ever faced it? This is the diagnosis that God has given of every sinner. This is the diagnosis in the Word of God. He says, from the crown of your head to the sole of your foot, you're full of wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. My dear friends, tonight, if you are not saved, you have a bigger problem than leprosy, and that is the problem of sin. Leprosy will only kill the body, but sin will damn the soul. Whenever this man discovered this white dot, he knew what it meant. Because when a leper in the days of the Lord Jesus, he had to be separated from his family. He was never allowed to hug his children again. He was never allowed to meet his wife again. He was never allowed to mix with his friends ever again. He was never allowed to go into the temple to worship God. This man knew that he was going to be separated forever. Friends, let me ask you tonight. Have you ever discovered because of your sin that you are separated from God? Your sins and your iniquities have separated. There's a void there that religion can't bridge. There's a void there that good works can't bridge. There's a void there that baptism and all the rest of it, and I could name half a dozen things, those things cannot bridge or bring back to God a sinner. There's only one person that can do that, and that is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. This man also knew not only was he going to be separated because of his sin, a, a leper was always dressed in rags. He was taken out of his robes, whether he was a king, whether he was high up in society, he was taken out of his robes and he was placed into beggar's rags. The Bible says that all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags in the sight of a holy God. I don't know if you've ever seen a filthy rag. But my dear friends, tonight, whenever you discover what sin is like in the sight of a holy, holy God, you will tremble in your very shoes that you're unclean in the presence of God. Whenever a leper walked through the streets of Judea, uh, Israel, or wherever he was, he had to put a finger over his lip. He had a bell in his hand, and he used to cry one word, morning, noon, and night, and that word was, unclean, unclean, unclean. I wonder, did you ever feel unclean because of your sin? Well, here was a man, he knew all about being unclean. And maybe you're in this meeting tonight, and uh, Georgina mentioned it two or three times about being backslidden. And you could be in this meeting tonight, and there's a day in your life when you got saved and you knew that, but you're not walking with God now, and you've be, been, become unclean. Things in your life has crept in. And you've wandered far, far away from God and the world has polluted you and you've lost the passion and the vision and the joy and the victory over sin. And now tonight you're in this very meeting and you maybe even feel contaminated, unclean. My dear friends tonight, as Georgina said, thank God he's the one that not only saves, but he's the one that can restore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's the problem that this man had. But then secondly, there's a person that this man met. It says in these verses, when he saw Jesus. 
My dear friends tonight, that's who you need to see. You need to get your eyes off yourself. You need to get your eyes off your good works. You need to get your eyes off your church. You need to get off eyes off all of the world and get your eyes onto the blessed Lamb of Calvary. My dear men and women, whenever this leper saw him, he was on the right road to get your eyes onto the person of the Lord Jesus. He had maybe heard about him before. He had maybe heard stories about the Lord Jesus. And I'm sure every single person in this meeting tonight, you've heard about the Lord Jesus time and time again. But this leper knew it wasn't enough just to know about him. It wasn't enough even to see him. He had to come towards him. And you have a decision tonight in this meeting. Whether you're going to come to the Lord Jesus or whether you're going to reject him. Many decisions are recorded in the word of God. And every time you listen to the message of the gospel, God pushes you for a decision. You remember whenever Adam and Eve were in, was in the garden and it was there where Eve was beguiled by the serpent and she took of the forbidden fruit. And then she came to her husband Adam and he took the fruit in his hand and he knew the moment that he took of that fruit that he di was going to disobey God. And he had a conscious choice whether he was going to defy God and disobey God and do what he wanted. And Adam in the garden made the wrong choice. My dear friends tonight, if you don't accept the Lord Jesus as your own personal Savior, you'll make a choice, but you'll make the wrong choice. You remember Judas. Judas who saw the dead raised. Judas who saw the multitudes fed. Judas who heard the greatest sermon by the greatest preacher, by the greatest man that ever lived. He made the wrong decision. He went to the Pharisees and he said, what will ye give me and I will deliver him unto you. And whenever Judas made the wrong decision, he died of suicide. You tonight in this very meeting could hear about the Lord Jesus. You could see him by faith. But if you don't come to him and repent of your sin, it'll be a decision that you will make and it'll be the worst decision of your life. What about Pilate? Matthew 27 and verse 22, it says, Pilate asked the question, what shall I do then with Jesus, which is called the Christ? And Pilate had, a, had an opportunity. He had a decision to make. And there was four voices that Pilate listened to that day. There was the voice of the crowd. There was the voice of his conscience. There was the voice of his companion. And there was the voice of Christ. He bypassed the voice of his companion because his wife said, have nothing to do with this just man. He bypassed the voice of Christ. He bypassed the voice of his conscience because he said, this man has done nothing amiss. And he took the voice of the crowd and he made a decision and he damned his soul. And dear young people in the meeting tonight, you could be listening to your friends, you could be listening to the advice of, your, of the crowd and you could make a decision tonight and you will end up damning your soul. Choose ye this day whom ye will serve. But this leper, he made the right choice. He came to the right man at the right time. He came to the one that he heard about and the one that he saw. He knew that he needed an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, tonight, I can't get it in any better terminology. I would love to have a better vocabulary to say it. But what you need is an encounter with a living Savior. One who died and rose again. The one that we celebrated in Easter that died on the cross. He's the one that's able to save your soul, change your life and deliver you. You'll never, you'll never, never be the same again. And hear this man. Maybe he was in his home and he saw the Lord Jesus. Maybe he was out in the leper colony. Wherever he was, he saw the Lord Jesus Christ and he started to move towards him. And you tonight, if you're not saved, you need to come by faith and move towards the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And maybe there was things going through in his mind. Maybe there was excuses there. What will other people think? Maybe he was afraid of, maybe there was people that he knew and this man wasn't allowed to come into crowds and he was maybe afraid. I don't know. But he got past all the fear and all of the excuses. He didn't need to clean up. He didn't need to go and put on a new pair of trousers or a new shirt. He just came as he was to the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't reform his life. I was thinking of the course this afternoon. I came to Jesus as I was, weary and worn and sad. I found in him a resting place, and he, thank God, has made me glad. You need to come to him tonight just as you are. That was 
Charlotte Elliott, who was in a meeting many years ago, and the preacher was preaching on that word, come, come to Christ, come today. Charlotte Elliott, after the meeting, came to the preacher, and she says, sir, I would love to be saved. How do I do it? And he turned to Charlotte Elliott, and he said, dear, just come as you are. And she got saved, and she penned that lovely hymn, just as I am without one plea but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. Is it not about time that you came? And here this man makes his way through the crowd. There's not only the problem that he had, there's not only the person that he met, I want you to see the position that he took. Because the Bible says that when he saw the Lord Jesus, that he fell on his face. He came humbly before the Lord. The old Puritans used to say, the door into heaven is low. Stoop, stoop. If you're ever going to have your sins forgiven, if you're ever going to have your soul saved, you're going to have to leave your pride behind and you're going to have to stoop. You're going to have to take the place of a sinner and acknowledge in the sight of a holy God that you've disobeyed him and defied him many, many times. And whenever you come humbly to the Lord, a broken and a contrite spirit, he will not despise. And here he came and he fell at the feet of the Lord. He knew that the Lord Jesus had power to deal with this problem. And I'm glad tonight, no matter if it was a murder out of McGilligan that's sitting in this meeting tonight, I'm glad that the precious blood that saved me is able to save you, sir. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, God is no respecter of persons. We sing it. Thank God there's power, wonder-working power in the blood. Matthew prayed the other night in the prayer meeting. He was in drinking drugs like myself. And it's only because of the power of the precious blood that he is here tonight. He shields. Many of us here tonight, all of us that are saved, all different testimonies, Georgina, the same blood that saved Georgina is able to save you tonight. Hallelujah. What a message. He came to the Lord and he fell on his face and he said, Lord, if thou be willing, thou canst make me clean. He wanted to be clean. He wanted to be made pure. He knew what it was to be defiled. He knew what it was to be separated from his friends and family and even from God. And he knew that there was only one bridge and that was the person of the Lord Jesus. And he came and he says, Lord, if thou be willing, thou canst make me clean. My dear men and women tonight, as you stand at the cross of Calvary and see the Lord Jesus Christ there, crowned with thorns, his visage so marred more than any man, there they pierced his hands and his feet, and whenever you discover, like Georgina, that he not only died for the world, but he died for you on that day, and you appropriate that to your life, whenever you say, Lord, you died for me, that's the day that you'll get saved. I heard the story recently of a young girl who was standing in the streets of London. She was maybe only six or seven years of age. She was standing on the side of the footpath and she was crying. And there was men and women, they were passing by her in their droves. No one seemed to care. And there there's a policeman. And he went over to her and got down on his knees and he said, Dear, what's wrong? What's wrong? Why are you crying? And she says, Oh, sir, I don't know how to get home. I don't know how to get home. And that policeman says, well, he called out some, some sites in London. He says, do you live anywhere near Big Ben? Oh, she says, I don't know where Big Ben's at. And then he says, do you live anywhere near London Bridge? And he, she said, sir, I, I've never heard of that place. I don't know where. It's not anywhere near I live. He says, do you live anywhere near the Houses of Parliament? And she says, no, sir, I don't live anywhere near there. And then he says, dear, do you live anywhere near Charrington Cross? And that wee girl with tears in her eyes, she started to clap her hands and she said, sir, that's it. Get me to the cross and I'll get home. The way of the cross leads home. My dear friend, tonight in your sin, you're on your way to a lost eternity where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. You'll be lonely there. You'll be in pain there. You'll be in torment there. You'll endure the wrath of God there for all of eternity. But if you get to the cross, you'll make it home. You'll make it home. There's not only the person that he met. There's not only the problem that he had. But I'm glad there's a transformation that he received. He came to the Lord and he says, Lord, if thou be willing, thou canst make me clean. And verse 13 says, and he, that's Jesus, put forth his hand and touched him. There's not another man in the world would have touched this leper. They wouldn't have touched him with a pole. 
But here the sinless, harmless, crimeless Son of God put that hand of divinity and touched him. Thank God he'll touch the untouchable. He'll love the unlovable. Thank God he can save the unsavable. And here the Lord Jesus put forth his hand and touched him. It was maybe the first time he was touched for many years. This man that was full of leprosy and the smell of decomposing body parts and there in all of his rags, here the Son of God touched him. And this is what the Lord Jesus said, I will be thou clean. My dear friends tonight, the Lord Jesus is not only able to save, he's willing to save, and he's ready to save. The only reason that you will go to a lost eternity, if you bypass the willing Savior, the ready Savior, and the able Savior, and if you bypass him tonight and die in your sin, you'll go to a lost eternity. And you have no one to blame, only yourself. And here this man came to the Lord Jesus Christ. I will be thou clean. And the Bible says immediately, immediately, immediately the leprosy departed from him. Here this man standing totally transformed. He didn't have to work for it. He didn't have to pay for it. He didn't have to turn over a new leaf. He just needed to come to the right man, and that is the Lord Jesus. What a tragedy it would be for you to hear about him and to know about him and bypass him and die in your sin. And some of you lovely young people here tonight, you've been brought up in the gospel and you've heard your mother pray and the bring your parents pray. My dear friends tonight, you need to get saved. Get saved. Get saved. Whenever I got saved that night down this, this that night, 22nd of February 2010, there was something went through my mind, and I've never told this before. It was almost as if I had to give in to my mother and father. It was just like the devil was saying, now, Stephen, if you get saved, you're going to give in to him. You're going to give in. And young person in the meeting tonight, the devil will whisper that lie in your ear. I didn't give in to my parents. I give in to the man that died for me. Would you not give in tonight? Would you not open the, the latch of your life and say, Lord, I am coming now. Coming, Lord, to thee. Wash me in thy precious blood that was shed on Calvary. I am coming, Lord. Hear this man after he received the touch and after he received the transformation. He was never the same again. My dear men and women tonight, the Lord Jesus Christ is the only Savior. You need nothing more you need nothing less. But what you need tonight is you need to put your trust in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do it now. Do it now. Maybe you're backslidden tonight. And maybe tonight, even as I've been preaching, the Holy Spirit has been pinpointing in your life things that you've allowed to creep in. And other people don't know anything about it. Maybe it's secret drinking. Maybe it's pornography. Maybe it's a, a moral relationship. Maybe it's lying or lust, whatever it may be. And God has put his finger upon you and you feel unclean tonight in the presence of God. My dear friends, that the Lord Jesus Christ is willing and able and ready to cleanse, but you need to come. Stoop. 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 The door into heaven is low. Stoop. Stoop. Last Sunday night, whenever I was closing the meeting, down Ballinahinch, just walking down the aisle, just to go to stand at the door. There was a young man sitting almost in the back row, and he ran up the aisle, and he grabbed me by the arm. He says, Stephen, I want to get saved now. I want to get saved now. That young man went into that little room, and he just got down on his knees, the tears coming out of his eyes, and this is what he prayed. He says, Jesus, I'm sorry for my sin. Will you come into my heart, and will you save me? And the miracle of a moment happened. Do you know what happened? Immediately. Immediately, immediately, the sin departed from him. Would you not get saved tonight? I'd love to help you. I'd love to sit down and read with you. We'll go to your home whenever we have to do. But don't lose your soul. Don't do it. Don't play with God. Even as you sit in the seat, just say, Lord, I'm coming. I'm sorry for my sin. I'm turning from my sin and I'm turning to Christ. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you now.
Let us pray. Father, we just bow in your presence tonight. We thank you for the word of testimony. We thank you, Lord, for the message of the gospel. And we thank you that it is the power of God unto salvation. And we pray tonight, Lord, whether people are backslidden, whether they're still in their sin, we pray tonight for that restoring and that saving touch from the Master's hand. We pray, Lord, oh God, that you will do what you alone can do and that you will get all of the glory and all of the praise. We ask it in the Savior's name.